So hello and welcome, I'm Frederick Dunn and I want to give you a pollinator moment. What we're looking at here today are honeybees foraging on boxwood shrubs. Now boxwood isn't necessarily a great plant for honeybees. It's used as a hedge here on my property and it is April the 6th and it is about 6.15 in the evening and it is only 49 degrees Fahrenheit. Now these honeybees are on the boxwood because, let's be honest, there isn't a lot else for them to glean resources from in the environment this time of year. They've come out of bad weather, rain, snow, and everything else, so now you might notice there's a lot of bees on these flowers considering how many flowers there are. In some cases, as soon as one honeybee leaves the flower, another one jumps right on it. But what I'd like you to do is take a minute and notice what the bees are doing, which regardless of the flower that they're on, will tell you what they're getting from it. So first of all, all of these bees are workers, and these are honeybees, and that means that they're female, by the way, because it's only the females that go out and gather resources for the hive. And if you'll notice, they're telling us what they're getting from the flowers by the tools that they're using. So if you notice when the bees get on the flower here, they're moving their four limbs and they're grabbing at it and they're even biting at these anthers. And this is where the pollen is. And if you also notice, the hind legs of the bees have little pollen packs on them. And this is a specifically designed feature of the honeybee that allows them to collect pollen and put it on their bodies equally distributed. So it's balanced, left and right hind legs, and they're going to fly this back to the hive, and guess what? It's going to be converted into bee bread, and the nurse bees inside the hive are going to feed it to their brood. So this is a critical protein that comes from plants that our honeybees need to survive. Now, are they getting nectar from these plants, you might be wondering. Well, let's just look at the bee here. We see the pollen on the hind legs. We see her working away at the flower, but what is not happening. You'll notice she's not sticking her tongue out. So if they don't swing out their proboscis, if you don't see the tongue going onto the flower, then they're not getting nectar. So they're exclusively going after the pollen. Probably the next pollen plant that will show up in abundance here is going to be the dandelion. But for now, this boxwood will have to suffice. So if you notice too, honeybees are covered in hair. And the hair on their body, as they fly through the air, gets a static charge. And the pollen that they're raking off and disturbing from this flower will stick to the hairs on their body, and they will rake it back to their hind legs eventually and create those pollen packs that we just talked about. So the other thing I want you to notice, you may not be familiar with honeybees. So if you notice this, because you'll hear them probably before you see them, if you just listen for a moment here, they are making a lot of noise, and I know that when you don't know about honeybees, that can be disturbing. Because they are, after all, capable of stinging you. Now what's the likelihood that a honeybee on a flower like this, away from their hive, would actually sting a person just for getting close and watching, as we're doing here? Almost zero because they're not defensive when they're out getting resources. So whether it's nectar or pollen or both, sometimes you'll see a honeybee on a flower and you'll see the proboscis go out, you'll see their tongue working on the nectaries of the flower and getting nectar from it. At the same time, you'll also see them getting pollen and raking that back to their hind legs. That would probably be a very good source for the bees because the nectar is a carbohydrate. They use that carbohydrate not only to make honey later if they have a surplus, but they consume it and that's what gives them the energy to fly around and do all the work that we're observing right here. So the pollen's the protein, the nectar is necessary to give them the energy to gather the protein so that they can go back and produce the brood that will carry the colony of bees through the year. So once again, don't be afraid of them. Get up nice and close and watch them doing the work they do. Now that doesn't mean you should reach out and touch them but watch in comfort. Don't worry about the bees stinging you. So that's my moment about boxwood flowers, and I'm using this as a resource video diary to show what's available to the honeybees 
at what time of year, and you might be wondering what part of the world is this? This is the northeastern United States, it's in the state of Pennsylvania, and it's agricultural zone 4, 1400 feet above sea level. So if you're interested in bees and the plants that they visit and what they get from those plants, please subscribe to this channel and I'll give you updates of pollinator vlogs as we go throughout the year. Thanks for watching and I'll just leave you to watch and listen to the honeybees as they gather pollen from this boxwood bush.